He has been crying to me for 38 years. Go and heal him. That was his assignment for that day. Period. And the Lord Jesus Christ healed that one man because that was the will of the Father for him to do. Nothing more, nothing less. See, that is why the ministry of the Lord Jesus is a perfect model. When some Greeks, non-Jews, came to him for to just have a talk with him, he never met with them. A Canaanite woman, you read this in Matthew chapter 15, whose daughter was demon possessed, came to him for to be healed. If you look at the conversation, the way he spoke with her, there was no, not any ounce of compassion. He even called the woman a dog. Would any one of you pastors call your congregation, you dog? Would you do that? If you ever do that, those dogs would bite you back. <laughs> we wouldn't call our congregation or believers dogs, right? But look at the Lord Jesus. He just couldn't care less. He said, why should I heal your daughter? Your time has not come yet. Go away! That was how he treated her. He was perfect to the last T of the call that was upon his life. He simply said one word, I call to the house of Jacob, to the house of Israel, not for the Gentiles. That is not my call. That time hasn't come yet. When you are yoked together with the Lord Jesus, that yoking will give you a knowing. Knowing the will of the Father God. What you should do, when you should do, how you should do. John chapter 8 verse 28 says, Daily taught by the Father God what he should do. That brings us to our next point. In John chapter 14 verse 12, the Lord Jesus said, Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than this he will do, because I go to my Father. Please meditate this scripture. The works that I do, you will do also, and greater works than what I did. You will never find another leader on this earth who would be so magnanimous like the Lord Jesus Christ, who never felt threatened by the subordinates. You don't find leaders like that today. Am I right? Well, they'll always feel very threatened by any believers who will rise up in the church. Immediately they want to squish them down. No! You don't have the call of God on your life. No! God did not speak to you. It's the demons who are showing your vision. Don't pray anymore. Am I right? But look at the Lord Jesus. He said, the works that I do, you will do the same works. Not only the same works, but greater than me. Look at him. He said, you will do greater than me. The works that I do, you will do. And greater works than that. Okay, what is the works that the Lord Jesus did? John chapter 4, uh, sorry, Matthew chapter 4 verse 23 and 24 says that he healed them all. Most of the time, except for one or two occasions, the rest of the times, every sick person was healed when they came to him. So that is the works that we should be able to do and greater. Now what is the greater? 
the greater is the powers of the age to come. The works that the Lord Jesus did is the manifestation of the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. And greater than what I did. The sevenfold manifestation of the seven spirits of God. That you will do. Because that God will give to you and you will do it. Amen. In order for you to walk in that power, to do those kinds of works, you need two stages of abiding. Two stages of abiding is required to do those greater works. What are the two stages? Let's look at two scriptures. Number one, John chapter 14 verse 10. It says here, Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. Now let's, let me read this scripture one more time and I would like you to follow in your Bible this scripture very carefully. Do you not believe that I am in the Father? What does that speak of? Abiding in the Father. Amen. Abiding. Being together with God. Being yoked together with God. Amen. That is stage one. And the Father in me, the words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father, which means the words of the Father that dwells in me. That is stage number two. Not only you are being yoked, like physically yoked, you are physically spending time hanging out with the Lord Jesus, but the Word of God abiding inside you. Two stages. Now let's look at another scripture. John chapter 15 verse 7. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. Now look at this. If you abide in me, abiding, yoking together with the Lord Jesus, stage 1. And my words abide in you, stage 2. Now for a long time, from 1979 right up to just a little while ago this morning. When I looked at the scripture, I used to think, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask whatever you desire. So whatever your heart's desire, you ask it, you will get it. That's how the scripture meant. Am I right? That's what I understood until a few hours ago this morning. But today, the Holy Spirit showed me that's not means. It means, when you abide in Christ, and His words abide in you, whatever you ask, for the benefit of another. Not for your own benefit. For the benefit of another. Whatever you ask, it will be granted to you. Whatever for the benefit of another. You see, the moment you shift the focus from you to another, the I in you dies. You crucify yourself. Shifting the focus from you to another. You die to self. You deny yourself. That is the key. When you reach this stage, you are already dead. When you are dead, Ecclesiastes says that dead knows nothing. When the dead knows nothing, it has no needs. 
right? It has no wants because you are dead. Have you ever seen? I'm sure you have been to many funerals. And uh, just a few days ago, one of the former presidents of the United States, George W. Senior Bush, died, and his coffin was kept in the rotunda in the Capitol. Now, I saw the pictures of it on the internet. The, ca- the coffin was not even open for people to see the man. It was the lid was tightly closed, and the U.S. flag was draped over the coffin. And every, even when President Trump came, he just stood before the box. He doesn't even know whether the man was inside the coffin. <laughs> Nobody knows. <laughs> Am I right? Yeah. Nobody knows. You mean they all stood by faith. <laughs> okay, here's my question. Did the dead bush complain why the coffin cover was closed? The poor man didn't even know who came to his funeral. Right? He didn't even know the cover was closed. Because that day knows nothing. In the same manner, you must come to the stage of dying. Dying. That your wants do not matter anymore. But you live for the good of others. Amen. Then, will be fulfilled in your life the scripture in Acts chapter 10 verse 38. Jesus of Nazareth was anointed of God with the Holy Ghost. He went about doing good. Amen. Went about doing good and you will go about doing good. Amen. Setting the captives free. Amen. Those are the good works. Those are the works you will do. And whatever you ask, it will be granted to you. Because you are no more self-centered asking for yourself. But you know the will of the Father and you ask that to be granted. Two years ago, a wonderful dear woman who looks after our ministry in Nigeria, her five-year-old son died. He was given wrong medicine and the poor little boy died. And the mother was devastated because the little boy was very spiritual and he was the mother's darling. So when the boy died, she did not bury him for how many days a day? Three days? About three days she did not bury him, hoping that God will resurrect that boy. She did not bury him. And so she went to the same church where Pastor Adibajo was pastoring. So she conveyed the message to him to pass the message to me to pray for the resurrection of her son. So when I received the message, it was about midnight. And I bent my knees to pray. And the Lord told me, His time has come to come home with me because I have another work for him to do in the heavenly realm, in the spiritual realm, more than in the natural realm. Now, if your son had died, you would not say Amen. No grieving mother will ever say Amen. Although it sounds good, you are so broken, you can never say Amen. So I conveyed the message to Pastor Adipanjo and he conveyed the message to the dear sister. And after hearing the word, they gladly buried the boy. But I told the woman, because the Lord told me, the son is a seed. 
the seed that is sown that will reap an abundant harvest. And I told her that your son did not die, he was a seed that was buried. And for the seed that you are buried, and a great company of children will rise up to do great exploits for God. This year, we had a children's camp in Lagos, Nigeria. About 300 children came from all over Nigeria for a five days of camp meeting. So I brought my staffs from India who have been trained to minister to children to impart the Joel 228 anointing. So after teaching the kids about the Joel 228 anointing, they prayed on the third day of the meeting for the, for the kids to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Not just baptized in the Holy Spirit, but also for their spiritual eyes to be opened. And every one of the 300 kids were baptized in the Holy Spirit. Evidence was speaking in unknown tongues. And every one of their spiritual eyes were opened. And they all had powerful heavenly experiences like the Apostle Paul. Uh, sorry, like the Apostle Paul and the Apostle John when he was caught up to heaven. Every one of them. Yes. And on the last day of the children's camp, I went there to pray a final prayer of blessing for all the kids. And this lady accompanied me because together with the children's camp, we also conducted a school of prophets for the adults. So I just took a break from the camp, from the school and I went to the camp. And this lady accompanied me. And when I heard all the testimonies of the children, this lady was standing beside me. I told her, my dear daughter, all these testimonies you just heard is the result of the seed that you sowed two years ago. Yeah. See, one seed will produce a great harvest. Amen? Amen? So you never know. See, the will of the Father. There have been some cases where I have prayed and changed the will of God. There have been cases where the Lord heard my prayer and He said, Because you ask, I will do this for you. And have changed and altered a person given up by everybody to die. And the Lord said, I'm adding years to the life of this person because you asked. But there have been times also the Lord told me, don't pray. Don't stand in the way. Let this person go because their time has come. Now, you can only know all this by being yoked together in God and His words abiding in you so that what you speak will come to pass as if it is the very words that the Lord Jesus Himself speaks. That is why the Lord Jesus said in John chapter 5 verse 19 Then Jesus answered and said to them most assuredly I say to you, the Son can do nothing of Himself, but what He sees the Father do. For whatever He does, the Son also does in like manner. The Lord Jesus Christ was plucked into the almightiness of God by being yoked together with God. You know, this subject of being united with God goes beyond just abiding. You are not just hanging out. You are hanging out together with the almightiness of God. So when you are going to brush shoulder with the almightiness, 
what is brush on you? Almighty power. Right? That's what is with you. Brush. How is it possible for the Pharisees to come to the conclusion that the boldness that was found in Peter and John was the result of they being with Jesus? They came to that conclusion. So, when you brush with the almightiness, that anointing is going to rub on you. It's going to rub on you. Now, let me show you. This is a very, not a very good demonstration, but this is how it happens. Let's suppose this is the Lord God. And you are here. And you start, you decided to spend time abiding in God. So you, you start worshipping God, you start meditating God. So a week pass by, from this position you move one step closer to where the Lord is. Then you keep on doing and you move another step. And then you move another step. Now you are standing right beside the Lord where you can feel the tangible power touching you. And you continue waiting and you move a little closer. And now you feel a greater flow. And you continue waiting. You come. Eventually, you will be in, in the Lord Jesus. In. That's what the scripture says. If you abide in me. Now please note the word. Not abide with. Not with. But in. See the anointing flows in four levels. According to Ezekiel chapter 37. First, the ankle. Second, the knee. Third, the waist. And fourth, at the neck level. A deep swim level. Four stages. So which stage you progress is dependent on you. How much you hunger. How much you desire. The reason why many don't venture beyond this place is because they only wish they will get the power. They just wish. I wish I will have the same power like you. And they just stay here and they don't move. If you don't move, if you don't do anything, nothing will move on your behalf. James chapter 4 verse 8 says, If you draw nigh unto God, He will draw nigh unto you. So you take the first step. You first draw near. And God draws near. You take another step, He takes another step. You take two steps, He takes two steps. Sooner or later both of you will meet eye to eye. And the meeting of the eye to eye depends on you. Please show me your right hand. Okay, now please take a good look at your right palm. And you say to yourself, it is in my hands. It's not in anybody's hands. It's in your hands. The power to touch God is in your hands. You have to decide. God has made a way for you. The veil has been parted. A way has been opened for you to walk freely and come and stand before the throne of holiness. The way has been made. Now you don't camp at the outer court. Why are we contented staying at the outer court when the way has been made open for you to go all the way into the holy of the holies? Sadly, most believers are contented to stay at the outer court. Or many of them will be contented to stay at the level of washing. What is the level of washing? Just the hype of worship. That's all. They like worshipping. They'll play music CDs. 
they do this, they do that, they just worship Him. Then very few will venture into the holy place. And very, very, very few enters into the most holy place. You know how few? One percent. Let me show you this map. According to the tabernacle pattern, the Levitical priesthood is divided into two groups. One, Aaron and his sons. And then the rest of the Levites. So the rest of the Levites, the priests, they are all engaged in this outer court ministry. Sacrificing, cutting the bulls, throwing away all the staffs, and performing all sacrifices. Many, many priests are involved in this work. Now in the holy place, only 5% are allowed. Aaron and his four sons. In the most holy place, only one person is allowed. That's Aaron. Not even Moses is allowed there. Only one priest. You see, the ratio is 1%. So, most believers, they just camp in the outer court. They are contented listening to the revelations others have. They buy all their books. That does not mean you don't buy my books. <laughs> they like to read. They enjoy reading. And then they wish. Oh, how I wish. They all behave like Cinderella's. How I wish. I wish I have this. You don't have to wish. The way has been made open for you to you need to do one thing. Get up from sitting in the outer court and move forward. And you do that by abiding in the Lord Jesus Christ. The another, another fact, aspect of abiding is being yoked together or united with the Holy Spirit being yoked together. First Corinthians chapter 6 verse 17. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Being united is being yoked together with God. Now please look at the scripture. He who is joined to the Lord is one spirit. Please pay attention to this one word joined. The word joined in the Greek is called kola. K-O-L-L -L means to glue, to stick, to cleave, to keep company. It means you stick together, you glue together, you are so glued that you cannot be separated. When you are yoked together with the Holy Spirit, the immeasurable anointing of God will begin to flow all through you. That can only happen by being yoked together, being one with the Holy Spirit. In John chapter 3 verse 34, it says, the Jesus Christ have the Holy Spirit without measure, measurelessly. Why? Because he was yoked together with the Holy Spirit. His entire self has been emptied. If you read Luke chapter 4 verse 1, verse 1 says, he was filled with the Holy Spirit and he went into the wilderness to fast and pray for 40 days. When he came out of the wilderness after the 40 days passed, the scripture says he came out with the power of the Holy Spirit. Verse 1 says he went in with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And then after the fast, he came out with the power of the Holy Spirit. 
he was anointed measurelessly with the Holy Spirit because he emptied himself totally. Totally. Why we couldn't have that measureless anointing? Simply because we are full of sin. That's our problem. There are so many idols in our hearts. Am I right everybody? A lot of idols. A lot of covetousness. A lot of self. The I. I is not only in the heart. The I begins from the head right up to the feet. This is the reason why we are not able to work the works of God. Not that God doesn't want to give it to you. He wants to give it to you. Just like the ushers brought in the bucket. If you look at the bucket before you. This bucket is not just empty bucket for offering. Please don't think it's for offering. Which you can also use for offering. Right Shidi? But there are water bottles. They brought these buckets and they put one for that section, one for this section, one for each section. But there are only four bottles there. So whoever sits in the front row, they get the bottles first. The rest of you have to fast and pray. <laughs> See, a wise woman, she decided not to fast and pray. And not only a wise woman, a very generous woman. She took for others. This woman has died to self. Okay, let's come back. See, the bucket is there. It is for you to take. You need not ask anybody's permission, do you? I never saw her ask anybody's permission. She just went there and took. In the same way, the gifts of God are put there for you. A way into the holiest has been made open for you. Now you need to get up and walk. And it all starts by abiding with the Lord Jesus. That is the key, my dearly beloved brothers and sisters. The key is not put, giving your head to a man of God and asking him to lay his hand on you and pray a prayer of anointing. That's not the key. The key is abiding in Christ Jesus. That is the key. When you abide in Christ Jesus, you have the resources to an immeasurable reservoir of anointing. Immeasurable. So the key is getting in and staying there. Don't get in and get wet and come out. Don't do that. Now that is another mistake many Christians do. They, now listen everybody. Many Christians or most Christians only wish for a visitation. But they don't desire a habitation. What's the difference? A visitation is a touch. A touch. You come to a meeting like this, you get a touch, a visitation. A habitation is you abide in the heavenly realm. You abide there forever. Which is better? A visitation or a habitation? A habitation. Because in a habitation, you stay in the Father's house forever and forever. And God, the Lord Jesus will then tell you, you can come in and go out whenever you like. An open door has been created for you. Not just a visitation. So, let it be known to you today. Do not desire for a visitation. You should persevere for a habitation. So that you can abide forever. To abide in the habitation, you must learn how to abide in the Lord Jesus Christ. By yoke together with the Lord Jesus Christ. When you are yoked with the Holy Spirit, you are 
being yoked or plugged into the immeasurable anointing of God and it will begin to flow through you. Let's look at a case study. Luke chapter 5, verse 16 and 17. Please turn your Bibles with me to Luke chapter 5, verse 16 and 17. So he himself often withdrew into the wilderness and prayed. Now it happened on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by who had come out of every town of Galilee, Judea and Jerusalem and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Now verse 17 says the power of the Lord was present to heal them. But how did this power come? The answer is found in verse 16. He withdrew himself to pray. And look at another word that is often overlooked in that scripture, verse 16. So he himself often. So it's not one time or two time thing. It is often. Which means a regular habit in the life of the Lord Jesus to withdraw to a secluded place to pray uninterrupted. Often, habitual, building a habitation, not a visitation, a habitation. As a result of being plugged in into the Holy Spirit, yoked together with God, yoked together with the Holy Spirit, the immeasurable power of God was continuously flowing in the life of the Lord Jesus. In what manner? Let me show you three examples. Example number one. Mark chapter 5, verse 27 to 29. The anointing of the Lord Jesus Christ flowed through even his robes. That even his robes were saturated and filled with the power of God. That anyone touching the rope was even healed. Not even touch his body, touch the rope. Example number 2, Acts chapter 5 verse 15. The apostle Peter was so plugged in with the Holy Spirit that even his shadow carried the anointing, the healing anointing. The people passing by his shadows were healed. Example number 3, Acts chapter 19 verses 11 to 12. The anointing flowed powerfully in the apostle Paul's life that it passed through his hands. And when he touched handkerchiefs or aprons, the anointing was passed into them. When it sprung out to the sick people, they are healed and demons are cast out. Now how is all this possible? Because they were plucked in into the main source. Now how does that technically work? Let me give you an example. In Zechariah chapter 4 verse 2 to 12. The prophet Zechariah sees a vision. In the vision he sees a lampstand, the menorah. And then he sees two olive trees. And he sees a pipe coming from one side of the lampstand and goes into one of the olive tree. Another pipe comes out from the lampstand and goes into the other olive tree. And he sees the oil that was in the lamp flow through the pipes and entered into the olive tree. This was the vision he saw. And this was what the Lord showed me this afternoon. Happens when you are plugged in, yoked together with the Holy Spirit. The lampstand is the Holy Spirit. And when you are yoked together, when you are joined together with Him, the immeasurable anointing that is from the Holy Spirit flows inside you to benefit and touch others. You know, I, I, I cannot hold this any longer, but I need to say this. I have been perceiving this for the last one hour. The thing is this, for the last one hour, each time I lift up my eyes to look at all of you, 
the word that comes out of my spirit is there are many of you here who are going to work the works that I've been just talking about. Amen. Many of you here, you are going to literally see the Lion of Judah walk in your midst. Not only seeing the Lion of Judah manifest in a meeting like this, but even when you are praying alone in the four walls of your house, you will see the Lion of Judah walk in your midst and come right up to you, even lick you. Now, that act of licking is a sign of showing two things, recognition and affection. And I also perceive in my spirit right now that there are many of you who are going to experience an open heavens in your personal life. Amen. Yesterday, you heard me say a fountain will be opened in the house of David. Hallelujah. And that house of David is in your house. Amen. The fountain will be opened. And the Lord Jesus Christ will visit you to talk with you face to face. This is a promise from God for you. Come on, lift up your hands, close your eyes, and just bless the name of the living God for a minute right now. Bless the Lord. standing beside you, my dear daughter Estelle. He has been sent in answer to your prayer to see a change in the way you do your ministry in your hometown. He has been sent in answer to the many days of fasting and crying unto God, prostrating yourselves on the floor before God, even your own husband did not know that you were seeking God to that extent. You had even felt the pain in your stomach when you were groaning before God crying out in great desperation to see a birthing my dearly beloved daughter God is answering your prayer today he has sent this angel a powerful mighty angel Thank you, wonderful Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, according to your word right now, I pray, let your children, let your daughter now, experience that anointing. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray, let your anointing fall upon your daughter right now. 
Right now, all over them, Lord. All over them. Let them feel your anointing flowing all over them right now. Thank you, wonderful Lord Jesus. Thank you, wonderful Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, all those who are hungry, all those whose hearts are ready, now I pray. Fill them, Lord. Fill them. Let a gentle anointing fall all over them right now. Right now. Let their mortal bodies not be able to contain the power and the glory of God right now. Let it fall. Let it fall. Let it fall. Let it fall. All over this auditorium. All over this place. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Fall. 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 Let your bodies not be able to contain the power of God falling upon them right now. Right now. Right now. Let it flow like a mighty torrent. Let your bodies experience the power of God. Like many hundreds of thousands bolts of electricity. Let it flow. Let it flow from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. Flow, Spirit of God. Flow. Flow. Not enough. Not enough. Not enough. Spirit of God. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name, fill them, fill them, fill, right now, right now, I command in the name of the Lord Jesus, let your spiritual eyes be open. In Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, I command their spiritual ears be open. Right now, let your power manifest, Lord. Let them not be able to stand before your power. Let it manifest. Let it manifest all over this place right now. Right now. Let them tangibly feel. Let them hear the wind. Let them hear the wind blowing. Let their ears hear your voice right now. Thank you, wonderful God. Flow.
wonderful God. Oh, my God. 